Hello everyone and welcome to the Excel Hub. In the first video of this series we looked at calculating the inputs and outputs as well as the amortization table. While the amortization table worked perfectly well for a term of 30 years, its accuracy decreased when we changed the term. This is because the period shown did not adjust to reflect the new term. In this video we will use VBA to make the amortization table automatically adjust the amount of period shown based on the term so that it can handle changes in the mortgage term. To elaborate, if we change the term to say 20 years, we want the VBA code to first delete all of the excess periods below and then repopulate them based on the required number of periods, which will be 240 as there are 240 months in 20 years. We can record a macro to do this by entering the developer tab and clicking record macro. Let's give this a meaningful name such as extend period shown and click enter. Firstly, we'll select the cell containing period 11. We'll then press control shift and the right arrow to select the entire row. Following this, click control shift and the down arrow and delete the selection by right clicking on it, clicking delete, shift cells up and clicking enter. After that, select the row containing period 10 and drag it down so that it shows 240 periods. Finally, select cell C7 and click stop recording. Let's now enter Visual Basic, click modules and module one to view our code. Now what our code is doing is adjusting the amount of period shown to 240, which applies when the term is 20 years. However, we want to be able to change the term to any number, not just 20 years, and for the amortization table to adjust accordingly. To do this, we need to add a cell which identifies the address of the final value that we want VBA to toggle down to when adjusting the periods. So let's create a new sheet, which we will call backend. And let's call the other one dashboard. Now in the backend sheet, we will have three headers, the row, the column, and the address. Now the row, which contains the final period of our amortization table is 245. In other words, it is 20 times 12 plus 5, as there are 5 rows before the first period. So let's add this. So we take the term, multiply it by 12, and add 5. To find the column, we can use the column function and take the reference cell, which is on the edge of the amortization table. To find the cell address, we can use the address function, first inputting the row and then the column. So the address we want VBA to toggle down to is L245. Now if we change the term to say 30, the address changes as well. Let's give the cell containing the address a name to make it more easily identifiable. And we will call it final cell address. And then click enter. We can now go back into Visual Basic. And before we add our variable, we're going to add option explicit at the top. Let's get rid of all of these comments. Let's call the variable final cell and let's declare it as a string. Next, we will assign the cell address we just made to this variable. Finally, we will delete this block of code over here and substitute it for the following, which is telling VBA to toggle down till the value provided in final cell address. Now to test our code, let's add a button. So let's enter the developer tab, click insert and select this button over here. And let's assign it to the macro we just made. Currently the amortization table is showing 240 periods of data as the term is 20 years. If however we change the term to say two years, then we'll want it to display 24 periods of data. So let's try it out. Therefore, 24 periods of data are shown, which is good. However, two small issues still remain. Firstly, you may have noticed that the screen flashes when the code is executed, which looks unprofessional. Secondly, it would be more user-friendly if the code would run upon changing the term, therefore reducing the need to click the button. So let's enter Visual Basic and solve these issues. To prevent the screen from flashing, we can wrap the following lines around our code. To 
To tackle issue number two, we can enter the dashboard sheet and add the following code. This is saying that when cell C7, which contains the term is changed, then we want the code to run. So let's close Visual Basic and test it out. Let's change the term back to 30 years. As you can see, the code runs automatically without having to click the button and the screen no longer flashes. Before we finish this video, let's format our amortization table by clicking Alt and T and click enter. Let's center align all of the cells in the table by clicking Alt H A C and let's remove these filters over here by clicking Alt A T and also remove this button. So today we use VBA to make the amortization table more flexible to changes in the term. In the next video we will discuss how to make charts using dynamic ranges to show how our interest and principal changes over time. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.